Yo, 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 what's up, guys? What's up, episode everybody? Episode three, we are back. We just want to say quick shout out to everyone that tuned in for episode one and two. Yes. We are on most of the streaming platforms. We are on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, and obviously YouTube for video format. Yeah, if y'all want to see us and uh, what we look like, go ahead and uh, check that YouTube out. Yeah, Guapo Life is alive. <laughs> Guapo Pinoy. No. Yeah, man, Ugh. we just uh, we're happy to even have this going on. We're going coming strong for 2024. Yeah, episode three. So uh, we always want to start off with a weekly recap, or at least a weekend recap on how we we uh, how we're doing, how we we uh, survived. Yeah, how we survived to even make this episode. Yeah, man. How was your weekend, bro? Man, it was pretty eventful. I'd say uh, it's been decently eventful, but it's getting it's starting to pick up a little bit more um shoot dude friday after i was chilling um got off of work took care of some stuff and then saturday i was supposed to go to that uh r b in the park event mm -hmm. but uh that didn't work out it was kind of a wash man so i ended up you know blessing somebody with the tickets i just put a post on my instagram and i was like hey you know if nobody cops these tickets i know i'm not gonna get what i paid for them mm. well first one to dm me you know what i'm saying you get them and it was cool. I was glad to see that I got to give them to somebody that would be willing to go. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Sunday had some dim sum again and then uh, with some friends and then went to um, a pickleball event from for one of our friends that was like, hey, you guys want to watch me play? Yeah. So we were just out there. Just I've never gotten to go to an actual tournament. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were able to, uh, I, I didn't even know, bro. But my work week was kind of crazy. Uh -huh. I mean, I had my 312s again on my doctor nurse shit. Yeah, and then yeah. on Friday night, we were able to celebrate my homie's 29th birthday. Mm. Uh, Theo, happy, Yo, happy birthday, birthday to you, Theo. Happy late birthday. We uh, went out and pre-gamed at 93. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the club, bro. We went to Heights Social. And we were only there for like 15, 20 minutes, myself <laughs> and my <laughs> wife. <laughs> my wife and myself. And like we just dipped after because I had to work like four hours after. So What were they playing in there? <sighs> Oh my <laughs> God, bro! Like top forty, like oh, man. party music. Uh, it was from like the like, last three years. My friend was having a good time. Bro. Yeah, that's yeah, all that yeah, matters. Yeah. But the mu the music was kind of questionable. But we can't be like those people that sit there in the corner, like oh man. Yeah, we couldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then after that Saturday, we uh, I went to work, and then after I went to a wedding, and that uh -huh. was beautiful. You know, weddings are always beautiful, man. Yeah, Unless some party poops, bro. There's some little wedding crashers. <laughs> Congratulations to y'all. Yeah. Sunday, I went to work again, and then I just uh, literally, after I took a shower, I passed out, dude. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm going to upload the videos for Sunday. Nah. Man. Hibernation mode. Yeah, hibernation mode. I slept for like 12 hours, bro. Damn. I can't sleep that long, bro. Ah, man. I, I get I headaches. Out. When I sleep, do you ever have that? When you oversleep? Nah. No, no, no. Okay. On my mind, bro, I just got to be up and doing something, because if I don't, if I sleep too long, bro, I wake up with a migraine. Or not a migraine, but I get a, this is weird grogginess yeah. yeah i get like sleep if i get sleep deprived throughout the week i have to really catch up on sleep yeah I, I try no, to, that's, that makes sense i try not to even cat, like get th that get bad. to that part yeah i got yeah. you and then uh yeah but i think i was just feeling a little tired because uh i just came back from mexico city man yeah how was it it was great dude we were able to find the venue or the church Tired. rather that we're mission accomplished our, mission accomplished hell yeah it definitely got in my feels bro shed a tear just being <laughs> in that church because that could possibly be the church that we're gonna get married at dope so, dope man and then obviously the food was good the yeah. drinks were good the vibes were good you can the, never uh, underestimate like the hospitality people have from a different country yeah, when you're visiting yeah. man they're just like Welcoming. So hospitable, so has uh, welcoming, and then yeah. like the food is always bomb, bro. Like, <laughs> habla español, bro. My my <laughs> line was like, my line was like, Estoy listo. para mí un latte con leche de avena. Dang. Yeah, let me get that. Oat, let me, give me that oat milk latte, please. <laughs> That's tight, man. Yeah, but that was it, bro. It was a. It was definitely a trip. I wish mm -hmm. I could go back, like periodically but peggy that's probably goo. gonna be it oh yeah dude peggy goo oh my god yeah. bro, i almost forgot we were able to see peggy goo and james blake how, how did Mono. she perform dude she came out fucking blowing bro yeah she came out cigarette in her mouth Dang. was just mixing dude oh my that's god tight. she killed the whole set it was an hour and 30 minutes oh that's perfect time yeah yeah and uh it was the last set so we were mm -hmm. just beat like it ended at 2 a.m Oh, snap. Yeah, and then at 2 a.m., and then we were just, like, Yo, looking for guessed. after parties, and yeah. we were, like, in that Uber, we were just, like, nah, we're going home. Let's go home. <laughs> I 
I feel that, <clears throat> man. Yeah. Dude, so speaking of, so while we're on the subject of, subject of music, man, so we like to call this, like, I guess we're going to call it by default Traffic Jams. Traffic Jams. Because uh, when you're battling that armpit of Houston, if you know from episode one, you'd understand what we're talking about. But um, you got to kind of watch that to kind of get it. Yeah. What are you jamming, bro, right now? What, what's on your list? There what's was on? this one song that I was listening to this week, man, that just mm-hmm. was on my playlist because uh-huh. I listened to it. I, I heard it at a music bar in uh, Mexico City mm-hmm. called Contigo by Paloma San Basilio. Okay. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that song <laughs> has literally been my like anthem for the week, man. Okay. What, I'm what about check you, it out. bro? Man, I've been playing um this generic essentials playlist from uh brent fires i just it's just it's a collection of all his jams bro and i'm like i'm in there and i'm like yeah i'm in my feelings i'm like this is some good yeah <laughs> this is some good stuff man so i just been playing that i'm jumping around again um it was dope to see like uh a refresh of like all the classic r&b jams from the event that i did get to go to so it kind of like re you know relit like someone was like doing a little bit of digging i was like you know i like that i remember that yeah. song it's but always yeah. nice to like refresh your playlist or yeah. like refresh what you're listening to from like old shit. Yeah, that no, you've for been sure. Listen to before. Yeah, but um, yeah. So were you able to do anything with Saint this weekend, bro? I mean, he um he spent some time with his mom. He uh for Easter she uh took him. I think they went to her uncle, you know, his uncle's house, her brother's, and I think they did some Easter egg stuff for him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They had some eggs, and he comes from a big, big cousin family. Like yeah, he, they have such a big family. So um. All of them got together and they had lunch and stuff and they, uh, you know, they they made sure he was cool. That's good. Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, bro, like uh, on a serious matter, yeah. man, like what, you know, every time I'm around Saint, like he's always so <laughs> like he's such a great kid. And like, yeah. So what was like, what do you think was the turning point in your your fatherhood, per se, that really like ignited the fire that? Yeah, this is the reason why I can breathe. This is the reason why mm-hmm. this is the chapters are pretty much the chapters in your life have been open towards you thing over damn i can't even word it because it's just like emotionally <laughs> driven that question bro yeah bro like the chapters opened in your life just because of saying like what was that turning Man. point like bro i think um dang that's deep but uh for me i think it was a lot to do with like giving up a lot of um my life in terms of what i was accustomed to yeah um that all played a big part of it man and knowing that i have a little dude that expects me to make it home um a little dude that like looks at you kind of with no fault no blame you mm-hmm. know no reason to not love you yeah and that's that's on some you know deep stuff but like i think the turning point was like i said man i gave up and i'm not saying my life was like you know super crazy but it was just you really pick and dissect like what it is that you kind of push to the side a little bit yeah. because your role as a father and a, as a parent in general is just like, it's super important. And um, I think taking it back to how I grew up, man, I mean, I, do, I grew up with my dad, but you know, my dad was sick, you know, for the kind of for a lot of part, I mean, a bigger part of my life. And so we were still around each other, but it wasn't like um, your expected like father son relationship, you know, mm-hmm. like he did go to my games, you know, karate and stuff like that when he was able to. So I think a lot of that stuff that I did kind of miss out on in terms of like what everyone else got to do with their dad, I'm trying to make sure that I'm able to do as much as I can with him. Yeah. So I think like that, that was kind of like my intention was like, okay, I'm going to give up a lot of like the partying, you know, going out and like doing that. And then I'm going to, you know, be there for him. But then um, he's at this age now where, you know, dude, he's with me. Like, you know what I mean? Like when we go yeah. out, when I, you know, his mom's working and I'm off or, you know, I get him like after school and stuff he's like my shotgun buddy you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. like he's with me like everyone's like oh where's saint like when they ask me like, where's your little boy at i'm like oh he's you know with his mom or whatever so i think that like it's a tight job man somebody actually asked me like yo what is like the hardest part or is it worth having kids and i said man that's i mean yeah it's like preference but dude it's like the hardest i always tell people it's the hardest job you're ever gonna learn to love yeah you know what i'm saying so you know what's crazy man it's like mm-hmm. Time is money, and then yeah. time with your child, it just realize, it makes you realize that you're you're the richest man in the world. Oh, right? yeah, dude. You know what I, I mean? I feel that, dude. All the time that you got with your child. And then, I mean, just from a personal note, like every time I go 
get a haircut from you. I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, where's saying that? Yeah. It's almost kind of weird not it being. It feels empty. Yeah, yeah, it's quiet, you know? Yeah, I don't hear like the tapping on the screen and shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, man. Yeah, man. He frustrates me. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it <laughs> twisted, bro. There's moments where I'm just like, dog. But then it's crazy. I saw this video where it said, when those moments that you get frustrated in your child, imagine yourself time traveling back at 80 years old in that moment and realizing that these moments aren't going to be forever kind of deal. Yeah. So you really just have to be like, be patient. Just be like, yo, man, this child doesn't know. Yeah. Right? They've only been around three, four years. Yeah. That's, that's wild. That's only a speck of dust. Dog, yeah, man. And all essence, essence of it. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, so as saying this growing up, man, mm-hmm. like there's like some sort of not even expectations, but more so like, is there a path that you see him having now <laughs> that he's at his age? He's like four now. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's some things that he's more gravi- he's yeah, gravitating towards. Yeah. Like, well, there's some things that you see that he's like gravitating towards. Man, because it's almost like from um, on my uh, perspective mm-hmm. of it, like kids nowadays they always go through phases. Right? Yeah, yeah. For so sure. what is his phase now, dude? Right now, man, he's been really dabbling into his like creative side, uh, whether it's playing with play doh, clay slime man unfortunately like multiple things multiple things like um like those motor skills and things that are tangible for him like mm. sensory stuff um he's really into like coloring and drawing and it's tight because i was i was like that as a kid i was really more into like art and stuff and yeah. so it's really dope to see and him to see him harness that and i remember uh, we have a homie man a uh, shout out to matt manalo he's a, a local oh, yeah dude houston Filipino. Art House himself, yeah man dude. so I remember him saying something about like don't get mad at kids when they color on the walls yeah and don't when they paint and you know of course as a parent you're frustrated because you're like yo that's the wall my value is depreciated yeah, in my house know? bro but it's like you have to embrace that sense of creativity the fact that like they'll they'll do it yeah. you know i mean he i think he even went as far as to saying like even just mark an area and paint like using chalk paint or just like you know Somewhere where they have access to that specific wall and just let them be. Oh, like controlled chaos, yeah, right? Contro- yeah, past. man. Just let them do their art because it's yeah. beautiful. And I was like, yeah, man. That was, I've always, so shout out to Matt, man. Um, shout out to Matt, bro. Uh, yeah. Dude, yeah. you know what's crazy? It's like, uh, I mean, not to make this about myself, but no, when no, I was yeah. growing up, bro, I remember my parents were like so big on not painting on the walls oh, yeah, or like drawing yeah. on that shit. No, no, for sure. For and sure. they were like, don't paint on the walls, don't even have posters. So it's like, uh-huh. It almost seemed like I was like internalizing my like artistic side yeah. as a child. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now that I'm older, I'm like, what yeah, I, I just remember now that my interpretation of it was just like, just because canvases on are on the walls mm-hmm. doesn't make them bare. Like, it just yeah. for me, it was just like imaginable mm-hmm. concepts that I could put on those walls. So like, it almost sh- strengthened my imagination yeah, in yeah. a sense because I was like, I want to draw something here, but I can't. You know? <laughs> but I'm not allowed to. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Um, I'm not feeling repressed, but <laughs> damn, bro. You're like, you're really forcing me to use my yeah. Dude, um, speaking of walls, this has nothing to do with art. This is actually completely opposite. Was I remember, bro, going through like high school. My brother in law, I remember he gave me like this stack of um, FHM magazines. Oh my gosh. For him magazines, yeah. right? Borderline like Playboys. Yeah. And, and I remember going through each one and i'll pick out like you know the hot girls and stuff yeah and i stapled on every wall except for when i filled them up bro and then my mom she would rarely go upstairs but when, you know she would do her monthly check in yeah she came in my room and she was like oh my gosh <laughs> what is all this like half naked women you know i was 15 bro so come on like, oh my, yeah 15 you know what i'm saying I'm like, 15's grown man shit you no know peak performance you know what i'm saying yeah. she was like uh-uh Rainio, you need to take this off <laughs> what but i left it on there for a few like like a year or whatever yeah. man and i just ended up taking it off but i just remember her being like uh-uh man you better stop that have some respect <laughs> yeah man but uh yeah dude that's that's dope i appreciate that question man um it's not every day. I, I mean, I do get to speak on that that subject to piggyback on like fatherhood. It's tight being a barber man, and I get a lot of clients who are future fathers. You know, their wives are about to give birth or um, curious about cur- it. Yeah, definitely curious guys who are questioning. You know, you know what it, what it's like. Yeah, and then guys, I I get to trade advice with old dudes <laughs> who are like, I've been a father for you know my kids damn near forty years old. Yeah, and I'm like, oh hey, cool. So talk, you know, talk me through it. Like, what do you have? Some you know, just give me some advice and. You know, that was some advice that someone gave me years ago in my chair was like, it's going to be the hardest job you ever learn to actually love. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I remember on my part, bro, like I remember going up, 
I would play sports mm-hmm. or I would have these events. And most of the time, my parents couldn't make it because they yeah. always work like, or, yeah. at the time that, like, they just weren't able to make it. Yeah, yeah. But now that I'm older, man, like, especially when I was cooking, like, I don't think my parents have ever missed an event, oh, like, pop-up-wise, bro. So it was yeah. just, like, it almost makes up for it in the in – the, in, I would have not thought it would, it would have came full circle because I was always, like, wondering, like, damn – I'm pl- I'm balling out right now, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? My parents aren't here, my yeah. people not here. But yeah. then like I have these like when I'm like passion driven on like cooking. Yeah. My all my parents were always at my events, bro, regardless that's of good, how expensive man. it was. Yo, man, like even though it was yeah. small support, like that's why it makes me question like for me uh-huh. I, I always I'm like contemplating like a career change, mm-hmm. not that it's like that serious of a matter right now cuz I would make it work, but it's like I want to be there for my kids yeah. if they're growing up, regardless if it's just sports or art or even just like being able to help them on their homework yeah. type shit. Yeah, man. So that's one big important thing, like yeah. just being able to support them from afar and yeah. also up close. Like being there, bro. You see a lot of stuff lately, like videos of kids in those crowds mm-hmm. and how their face lights up when they're searching through the crowd. Yeah. Like that's real, bro. Yeah. Like, I remember looking for my mom in the, you know, school choir, Christmas presentation, whatever. And you see them and you, you feel comfortable. You're yeah. Like, finally, like, oh, I can I can show out. You I know can I mean? act out now. Yeah, man. So I think that's such a vital um, thing. But I understand circumstances change and people don't have the ability sometimes to show up. And it's unfortunate. But it's like if you are able and willing. Yeah. And it means so much to your kids, man. No, for real. I can only imagine, bro. Yeah, I'm not saying my parents weren't there, but they were no, big no, on for the, sure. My parents were big on the TCBY. A, a, a not, <laughs> we might not be here. Yeah, but you have our support, or like indirectly, like they're like, you know, we have to make these sacrifices yeah. because we came here to this country type yeah, shit. Yeah, and it was like something I couldn't even fathom when I was younger because I was like, nah, <laughs> all my friends' families yeah. are here. How come they're here? Here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not even the resentment now. It's just more so a sense of understanding. Yeah, yeah. And I think that if they wanted to, they'd yeah. be there like 100%, man. Got them grind, bro. Yeah. But like, uh, I still remember when uh, my pops was like trying to teach me how to bike, bro. I think I told you the story, <laughs> man. I was like, bro, I remember my pops, the first time we got on the bike, no training wheels. Yeah. He just pushed me and I got it the first time. And I was like, damn, this is that easy. Mm -hmm. I was riding through the streets. I was like, we still were living with my aunt in Missouri City. Yeah. Was able to go. And then after that, I just lost tune of like how to even ride the bike. I I guess I was just overthinking it. Yeah. And then like we were maybe for like 30, 45 minutes, I was like trying to get it. And he was like, nah, (laughs) this is it. I'm going inside. You got to figure this shit out in yourself. Dang. And I was and like, tough love. tough love. Or more so like, <laughs> motherfucker, get, it's a bike, bro. <laughs> just learn how to ride that shit. Next thing you know, a couple months after, he's like, yo, we got to put some training wheels on this regular sized bike, bro. So yeah. imagine like a big ass kid <laughs> on a full adult size mountain bike, bike. mountain bike with training wheels. Yeah. All my friends are looking at me like, bro, you're, you're literally on my dad's bike with training wheels right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, dude! Speaking of that, um, it, it's wild teaching Saint how to ride his bike, and he has one of those um, balance bikes. Okay. And the first time I seen him fall, I, it was weird because he had a helmet, but he fell and he caught himself. And he says to me, "I'm okay, Daddy. I'm okay." Like, and I was just like, I got taken back, you know, because I was like, "Damn, he was he was trying to let me know, like." Don't worry, because I freaked out. Yeah. And I grabbed him. I was like, you're okay. He dusted off. I'm okay, daddy. I'm okay. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's tight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he was letting me know, like, don't worry. I'm fine. Like, hey, these kids are durable now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they built we different, get, bro. Yeah, you got to give them more credit, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think it hurts the parents more. Like, kids freak out when they see you freak out. Yeah, it's like a return. In yes, bro. Like, if you kind of hold back your emotions, if your kid falls, like the other day, he bumped his head. He like freaked out because I was like, oh, yo. And then he was just like crying. But then I knew if I didn't show that reaction, yeah. I just downplayed it a little bit. He would have been like, oh, you're not tripping. So I shouldn't be tripping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but yeah, man. man, that makes me think like, I mean, I'm not a kid, a parent <laughs> yet, but I'm like, bro, I might be cold cut savage when I'm a pops, bro. Yo, man. And let's just be real. Like some of that stuff stems from how, you know, yeah, how, how your raised. father handled it. You know what I mean? Yeah I, I don't, yeah, I don't know how many times I heard, hey, get up. 
<laughs> yeah. For us, that was every Saturday morning, yeah. dog. He wanted, my dad wanted to clean the house every Saturday. Yeah. Like, let me just real quick briefly paint a picture of how strict he was in terms of cleaning the house. We used to have like a Persian rug in the dining room or whatever, mm. but it had those fringes. like this. Oh, yeah, and the ends. Bro, we had to take a comb and comb them straight. Oh, God. After you vacuum, bro. Yeah. That's the most tedious shit. Maybe that's why you're such a good barber, no. bro. Oh, man. That boy combing that. Or I have PTSD of uh, Persian rugs. <laughs> yeah. Persian rugs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, karaoke night, man. Bushy from Nicaragua. <laughs> Yeah, man. Man. That's tight, bro. Yeah, bro. Good topics. I, I wanted to talk to you, too, also about, like, uh, where were you Where were you at in your life when you had that transition into the barberhood, per se? Like, oh, I can tell you, bro. Because that was, what, like, five, six years ago? Eight. Eight, eight years, years ago? Bro, 20, I finished in 2015, so, so like, I started 2014. Jumping bro. around, like, careers and mm -hmm. trying to figure out, sifting through what you wanted to do. Yeah. What made you want to stick with, because it almost seemed like you were just kind of like sifting through oh, careers 100%. because it, it, made, it made more sense to just like figure out what you like. Yeah. So what, not turning point, but what substantially made the difference between all your other careers to, to why I stuck? Yeah. Why you yeah. stuck with bar, uh, bar, the barberhood or the brother, the, <laughs> the brother, the brotherhood of cutting <laughs> hair. Yeah, man. Uh, good question, dog. Um, I always liked getting haircuts, bro. I really did. My dad would take me to the barber shop or to his back in the day. We didn't go to barber shops because, you know, there was like salons. Yeah. Of course, my dad would always let the little Vietnamese lady touch up on his hair, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. And so he would bring me along naturally. And so I always liked it. It was like a tradition every once, once every two weeks or something, we would go. Um, and then through middle school and stuff, I was cutting my own hair or whatever. And then um, I guess, like you said, but I've been known to kind of just like, find my path man i was just dabbling in everything just trying to like gain some sort of sense like of what i like to do you know what i mean and to a lot of people it's like it's not a good trait to have where they're like oh but did you see it like through 100 percent? you know what i mean yeah before you decided it was time to flip over and do something else and um i mean being young like in my early 20s man i was just like trying to find my way after leaving like, the retail industry you know I got offered this position of working at a motorcycle shop and it was a homie of mine, Tony. And he was like, look, I got this powder coating business. You know, I do paint and body, but I need somebody to run the powder coating side. And he's like, I'll teach you everything. I have all the equipment. You run it, you charge what you want to charge. And that's you, you just, you take over that business. For yeah. Me. And so I was like, yeah, I'll try it. You know what I'm saying? So I did. And um, it was dope. It was really good. It was a good experience, man, but it was very, it was very dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you were dipping stuff in acid. You were sandblasting. You were man getting burned. All and the fumes were crazy, all, oh, bro. Yeah, and we didn't have the most like high tech respiratory systems. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were just whatever you could grab, gloves. That went hold up your to breath. You. Hold your breath. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like I'd be by myself, just in the heat of the summer, bro. And um, it was at that point where I was doing haircuts on the side, and one of my good friends says, "Doug, why don't you just go to school for hair?" And I was like, "What you mean?" You know? And he's like. Why don't you be a barber? I was like, for real? You think so? He's yeah. like, dog, go to school, get your license, and just take it. And I was like, all right, bet. Yeah. That next day, I remember that night, I remember going online. I was like Googling barber schools in Houston. And then I was like, where do I even start? Start off, you know, and then I found one. Dude told my mom at that point, my mom was like, you need to do, just do, do something. Yeah. Okay. I was like, all right. And uh, I went to barber school, dog. It took me like 13 months, I think. And that was it. And then that was 2014. And kind of jumped around different shops around Houston, kind of learning the trade and learning like the business. And I think that's where I was just like, yo, I like this. Yeah. I like this. I still retain the socializing aspect of it. Yeah. And still, obviously, it's a business. So I'm still getting a return on service. You know, I'm providing goods and services. And um, right now, it's it's helping me out in terms of flexibility. Yeah, dude. Yeah, with Saint and I'm like, so I, I admire your schedule right now. Oh, Tuesday man. to Saturday, and then you can yeah. pick what time you bounce, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, dude. Yeah, it, it it has its perks, bro. But then there's also there's just drawbacks. You know what I'm saying? Like, like in life, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't got like a I don't have a pension. I don't have a retirement. I got four one. I got health insurance. Um, that boy betting on himself, bro. 100%, yeah, so dude. That's why this year is for us is a get right, get tight. You know what I'm yeah, saying? For sure. So we we we're, we're back in the gym. We were trying to do it right, and 
you know, see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, longevity is key, man. Yeah, for sure. Dude, that's cr that's great, man. I just I always wondered how like some people jump into in in their careers, regardless mm -hmm. if it's like um, school driven or yeah. even just passion projects that become careers. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like that you were doing that for like a period of your time, just on the side. Yeah. So yeah. like to make that even happen, to make it a full time career, mm -hmm. it just makes it seem like, or it's it's to be known that you're talented in what you do, bro. So never a. Uh, undermine your ability Man, of what you do i appreciate do, that it gets hard sometimes dog like you know they say like the whole comparison is like the killer of what how's it yeah. like your happiness or whatever it's true man if you sit there on the gram and you're looking at like these barbers depending on how you take that information whether you use it as motivation to be like i want to get to that level yeah or if you're looking at it as like why am i not that good how you know i'm never going to get there i've been doing this for xyz and i'm still not at that level it's like I guess what you choose or how you choose to let that information like resonate with you yeah, is going to make a big difference, man. Cause like you can't sit there and judge people's work and then compare it to why you're not at that certain level, man. I mean, everybody moves at their own pace mm. and I think everybody has a different way of getting things done. And so that's like a big uh, a factor in that, especially in the barber world, how you do something, how you slice, you know, meat and vegetables and all that stuff. I don't even, you know what I'm saying? My yeah. stuff don't ever look the same. You know what I'm nah, for real. But like, it's, it's your technique, right? It's like, your technique. It's the mm -hmm. amount of time that you put in, the repetitions. Yeah. Like for me, when it, came, when it comes to cooking, it was more so like, how did they get that good? Mm -hmm. And what took them to do it regardless mm -hmm. of time or yeah. what, like, what really drew, drove them to do that or be that skilled? Mm -hmm. And it was never for me like, that's unattainable. It's more so... I got to get the reps in, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, being yeah. able to get those reps in regardless of like being outside of the job, yeah. you got to be like a monster when it comes to it. Like you just got to be really diving you yourself yeah, into Your it. mentality, bro. <clears throat> Some people don't have it, bro. Some people will literally cap themselves off. For mm -hmm. me, like I'm comfortable where I'm at in cooking mm -hmm. to where I'm able to read the book per se. Yeah. Whereas before, I couldn't even read the language. I couldn't even. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even like uh, interpret what a word yeah. was. But uh -huh. now it's like I can read a book. You know what I mean? And you I'm get able it. to yeah. grasp concepts from what the authors are yeah. displaying. I in a sense, like, and it was like now you know, like I talked to you about this before. It's like, <clears throat> and it was hard to articulate it. It was like. You know, it's regardless of what I'm doing, like I try to become like this whole concept of being my own font. Like mm -hmm. this sounds so corny, right? But like when you're on your computer, you see like the certain font that really mm -hmm. appeases towards what you're trying to convey. Yeah. Regardless if it's just like, you know, Time New Roman or Helvetica <laughs> or you know what I mean? But you always have to have your drive to even have the baseline or the standard of how you're going to cut your hair or cut these vegetables or yeah. dissect this animal. And then like, there's always like technique driven things, regardless if it's French or Japanese or Chinese yeah. or new American, it's like mm -hmm. you have to find what works for you and then make it your own. Yeah. So essentially like for me, you got the baseline. Yeah. Baseline and, and then, then you finesse. Yeah. And then, then, and gold, then, gold flakes no. gold flakes for real bro yeah and then the crazy part is when we were talking about that it was like a finesse mm -hmm. but also the sense of pivot you remember yeah pivoting is big in in life man yeah it, pivot so like <laughs> look, let's talk about the pivot right now this yeah, is second the euro pivot, step bro the euro step of life man yo man life comes at you so fast in the blink of an eye your life is here or is there it is a, a vapor right yeah um, learning to pivot. I'm so big on the pivot because I've had to practice the pivot more so now in the last year than I've had ever in my life, dog. Yeah. And I think it is so important that you learn the Euro step, you learn the pivot, how to drive to the goal, regardless of your opposition, man, because or the counter, bro. Yes, man. You need the dream shake from Hakeem. I mean, it is real because if you can't pivot in life, man, you are going to get blocked. You're going to get double teamed. You're going to get, trapped. you know what I'm saying? You get trapped, bro. You got to dish it out. If you're playing man, you know, zone, whatever it is. Yeah. Because right? without pivoting in life, like I said, you get, life don't stop, man. Life yeah. doesn't stop. And I think that's important to learn that pivoting provides some secondary outlet of when you feel like you are pushing through and you're making stride and you're getting towards that goal. 
And then all of a sudden, boom, somebody pops up and they try to double team your ass and you're trying to dish it out to the top of the key, bottom of the key. How yeah. can you do that? How can you drive? How can you, you know, get it out? And if you can't learn to pivot in life, man, you will feel like every opposition is like heavier than it has to be. Yeah. You if know, you can't pivot, you can't be free. No, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Simply put, bro, mm -hmm. like to pivot, to make the change, to even be out of the situation you're at. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like we're in this uh, infatuation of escapism, but more so, it's Shoot. more so knowing that there is an out, knowing that there is light towards that tunnel. You know what I mean? Yeah. The grass is greener on the other side if that's the side that you want to take. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, bro, like pivoting in life, just from my personal standpoint, was like i was able to finish through and see things through when it came to like my career or my yeah. education yeah but like after i graduated bro like the the type of shit that i had to go through mm -hmm. and i'm not even like trying to make it a sob uh, yeah, yeah. A sob but it's like bro i i've been to a psych ward a couple times you yeah. know what i mean yeah. and like to be able to bounce back and like lose my mind and then like recoup and like mm -hmm. also just like build up a new way of thinking to just build because, yourself back up yeah, bro. yeah. The, the art of rebounding and the art to bounce back bro you never underestimate the man that can bounce back from any situation in life bro man. and we're like living proofs of it bro you know what i mean so we yeah. can't even like play the part of like trauma bonding or even thinking like we're not even Good amounting enough, yeah. to like what we think is our baseline on what we should be doing but yeah. it's more so the baseline of what we think or we know is good for us you know mm -hmm. just like you said like everyone is living their life at their own pace yeah you know people might get their flowers a little earlier than we are yeah. or yeah. they're getting their flowers a little later but you'll get your flowers when time is when it's when time it lines is necessary, up bro. yeah yeah man i think that um <laughs> right now i'm in the season of my life where it's um i had to you know speak to somebody about stuff stuff that's going on with me outside of everything and it was like you need to be completely honest with yourself and you need to break it down and find the missed opportunities when you when you're given I'm big on this now is like the opportunities that you had to take those shots and make the right choices and do the right things for the greater good of you and whatever you have going on but you simply chose to go left you know what I mean yeah and I think it was more like a self-reflection exercise about you know being very soberly honest with yourself I talked about that on my personal IG and it was just like, man, I just had to sit there and write them out. And I said, dude, I'm not flawless. You know, I've never lived yeah. my life like I was, you know, and he said that um, if I could just speak to you from a person to person standpoint, man, it's like I have felt like you've just made a lot of excuses for yourself. And, you know, mm. I was taken back by it. I was a little kind of like man, offended. Geez. right? I was, bit. you know, and then he said, I'm not saying this to offend you understand that like this is not but he said this is an observation that i've had having known you for like 20 years yeah and he's like it seems like in times of whatever like it's like you kind of justify because xyz is this way because of this what you know what i mean and i was just like dang like when have you really low-key i had a lot of rebuttal for it right in my head it was like yo you've been around me 20 years but in those 20 years you've probably been around me 20 times yeah you know what i mean and in those moments, if that's what you formulated of how my personality is, like, again, you're making excuses. But then me hearing me say that is like, is that another excuse? Yeah. To it? So and I, I told you that, you know, mm -hmm. and then you, re, you know, you told me like that's a straight that's a really good exercise. But understand, like, you aren't that you're not defined by that. Yeah, you're not defined by the mistakes. That yeah. You, and you've done. But it's good to recognize those and yeah. don't deny them, though. If you're accountable of what. Yeah. You've be, done. Yes, that's exactly. Be accountable and hold yourself up to to be right behind those reasons yeah and don't hide from them right and so um it was dope it was kind of like a, a revelation for me to be like okay at least i have a list for myself because he said that is more so for you than it is for anybody else yeah and it's like you've ever you feel in times where you 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 know going through look back and, and try to kind of see where you can fit to do better right mm -hmm. and so i think that's what i'm doing now man i think is, is taking back a lot of my opportunity to make better choices for myself and for my family, you know, for my son, whatever. But uh, yeah, some real stuff, man. <laughs> nah, it's, a, it's good conversations to have. Yeah, man. Why do you even have to pay for therapy if you got a podcast, bro? <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> you know, you, know you got two homies <laughs> yeah. from 
different aspects, different walks, man. And you just step. come through. We can solve our no. Yeah, we can solve our problems right now. <laughs> one podcast at a time. We have one episode every Monday, man. Yeah. Dude, that's dope. No, nah, but I think that's a good perspective to have. Uh, holding yourself accountable to mm-hmm. what you've done or the excuses you've had mm-hmm. is key because, like, if you can't face them or you're just like undermining it or like, yeah, putting throwing it under the rug, then it's just gonna explode, man. Yeah, it, it comes out, and d- depending on who you're with or the people you're around at that time, that can really hurt people, right? Yeah, like the way it comes out, and you don't have intentions of hurting people, but dang, it's like. I think communicating those types of things is super important and letting people know like along the steps or before it reaches like the bottom. Right. Mm-hmm. I think like if you can communicate that. Yeah. You can only hit rock bottom so many times until you get stuck, bro. If you smell. Uh, yeah. yeah. You just- <laughs> if you smell. <laughs> bro, if you get in rock bottom, <laughs> bro, you know what I mean? By the, yeah, By the rock, you, you done, down there, bro. bro. Yeah, you yeah. stand. Man. But I'm saying, man, it ne- it's never t- it's never too late to make yeah. a change in your life for the better, bro. Michael Jackson said it, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna make a change. Exactly, bro. Rest <laughs> in peace, man. Oh, man. White Jackson <laughs> or Black Jackson? Oh, man. Or Transition Jackson? I mean, Jackson was tight all the way through from the whole Straight spectrum, up, bro. I mean, Black Jackson was tight because it was like, you know, the hits. But then he also made hits as White Jackson. But yeah um dude so what next what's the next uh the subject that you want to i think we got to lighten it up a little Let's bit, dog. It there's, up a little bit. there's a little bit of something that um i want to talk about that uh pretty much has been on our list of things that we want to ask you guys as viewers man yeah guys i just want to make it seem like <laughs> i want to make it clear that everything that we're doing on the podcast yeah it's a loose itinerary we have intent about it but we want to make it interactive too. Like we want to ask y'all, what are some talking topics or segments that you think should stay? We're still starting off, so it's like we have no reason to make it seem like we're not, uh, we're just so closed off or anything. So yeah, please let us we're know, up guys. for it, man. We're Which I want to see it. us talk about. Yeah. Man. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about some funny business. What does that yeah. sound? Oh. Funny business. So you know, we talk. We have a little <laughs> list of little things, but uh, one that um, one of John's homies had brought up to him, you know, in conversation was, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, go ahead and say it, bro. I, so, I shit, it, never get, it never gets old, man. Yeah. Um. So let's just say, for example, the um, you are in the position of I don't know, missing one of your fingers. Yeah. Missing a toe. Pinky index. Pointer. One of them, right? Should you be charged based off of? Let's say you're at a nail salon and getting your hands done or whatever. Should you be charged less of a price because you are, in fact, missing a part of your dicks, you know, your your hands and stuff? What do you think? Man, bro, (laughs) anything below five is a discount, bro. Five below? (laughs) Five below is a discount right there, dude. Yeah, this should be, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, if you're going to charge me for 10, but I've only got nine. Or eight. It's less less labor, less material. Yeah, I don't know how many cousins I have in the Philippines that are missing fingers because they were like playing with a fire fireworks. Or... Fireworks. <laughs> I'm like, bro, either that or you were a thief, dog. No? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think. Should people with missing, you know, whatever, like, no, no disrespect to anybody. We're just, it's a general question that his friend brought up. If you are missing a leg, should you just get half off if you're getting one foot done? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He bounced the question back on me and said, well, if you don't have a lot of hair, yeah, on some barber, barber should you shit. be charged? And I'm like, look, man, if them clippers are getting turned on, because I've had dudes try to finesse like the service, like, oh, just a little trim up on the side. You know what I mean? And um, I think that it's, uh, man, when them clippers power up, bro, we in this for a haircut. We're going to yeah. get you. <laughs> That's a baseline. At That's least, a baseline, right? man. Like, for okay. real. Props to that, bro. Yeah, man. I was going to say uh, I'll do the hairline re- reveal, but maybe another <laughs> episode. You know what I'm saying? We're looking hot with ooh, the trucker ooh, Yeah, right man. Now. We're going to get our um, our wigs done. Pretty <laughs> soon. We're going to get the toupee done, bro. Ra- Ra- I am Raniel's first customer. Yes. First. I'm not even. You know what? He told me he's not yeah. going to even charge me because it's yeah. his first time. Bro. Yeah, man. I do low-key want to try like uh, those those man pays or what are they called? Yeah, yeah, like man. just as. You know, shave the whole top down, keep the sides, put the tear piece on top, and blend it all in, and kind of mm. he gonna look like a K-pop star by nah, the time I'm look t- like Bruno Mars, bro. <laughs> Bruno Mars with the curls. But yes, I'm gonna sir. get him like the African American textured hair, so it'll be like, damn boy, got that wave yeah, game, bro. I just got perm, bro. Vel- no, you are gonna have the velvet or the um, velour um, do rag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually got one 
the wave cap? I, I got a do-rag, bro. I don't know what was going on, bro. But <laughs> I was like, I never told you this, but I was like, you know, God bless my heart, bro. But I was like having a manic episode. Yeah. I, I told you I'm bipolar, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it comes like every other, I mean, God, I mean, knock on wood. But mm-hmm. anyways, I, ha- I I bought a do-rag and I was like, yeah, this is the look now, bro. I'm going for this look, man. I was, it just made sense to me, bro, for the culture. Spooky man, black. I, yeah. I was wearing that velvety velour do rag, bro. I I have never felt so confident in my life, man. Now, so now I get it, bro. I yeah. get it now. Shout out to the confidence boosters. Yeah, the thank you, Lord. Dude. Velvet. Um, I might even bring it back, bro. <laughs> what color was it? Black. Oh, okay. I thought it'd be like purple nah, or turquoise. Or that per- that pink. Yeah. yeah the fuchsia. Not. Yeah, the fuchsia. <laughs> fuchsia. <laughs> oh man, that's a good one, dog. Yeah, man, but uh. <laughs> when it when it really comes down to it, bro, yeah, I personally think as a consumer, if my hairline is pushed back, yeah, just give it up. No, 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 don't give it up. <laughs> Pri- push back that price too, bro. Okay, <laughs> you know okay. So if we start here at a hundred percent and it starts going back, it's like, yo, bro, that's at least seventy, right? You're like, there, yo, man. that's I, I lost seventy percent of my hairline. Like, shouldn't yeah. I be? That's yeah. a bank of knowledge. That's a forehead of knowledge, right there, bro. <laughs> I got gems. Yeah. Oh man, dude. Yo, this is a this is a, go ahead, bro. I know you got to okay. say one. I just saw this funny one, man. Soggy cereal eat or toss. Soggy cereal? Yeah. Uh I'm blending it and turning it into ice cream, bro. <laughs> man, there's only certain soggy cereals that I'm willing to eat, which are probably like uh cinnamon toast crunch cuz I think it has like this weird cardboardy flavor. I'm not flavor, but like texture once it's like yeah. soaked in milk. Where you could still kind of eat it and there's slight hints of crispiness somewhere left in it. Nah, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like one hour. Oh, so shoot. It's one hour. Done for if it. it's in oat milk, it's cool. If it's in like regular milk, I probably won't do it just because that, that curl. Yeah. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah, man. Man, there's this like uh, Instagram that's going on called Subway Takes. Yeah. And they were like talking about like, yo, big milk was big milk is coming like going down the hill because of all these freaking oat milks yeah. and all these nut milks yeah the take was a little better than i said it but i was like what is your subway take if you were in the subway right now about life or whatever it could be wait i thought we were talking about subway sandwiches nah, no bro. oh fail i was thinking sandwich wise nah, oh. subway uh subway like if you were in the subway in new york people have been like big on like yo subway take bing bong <laughs> no, i gotta be more uh, Let's let's skip this shit. I <laughs> I got to be more intentional about it. I got I you. Forgot. I got you. No worries, dog. Oh man, what is uh? Let's see. What national? This is funny. What nationality would you be if you were to choose a different one outside of being Filipino, man, bro? Of all the shit that's going on in the world outside of being Filipino, that's rough. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my cousin up, the Samoan Tongans, the people oh. of the Fiji Islands, bro. Yeah, because yeah. it would I would look like myself, but probably like six four, play ukulele, uh-huh. be able to you know sing a little yeah, better. Yeah. I'm not going to so, question. I can sing a little bit, bro. But them motherfuckers know how to sing. They know how to act. They, they can know. press that little string yeah. with these big gentle, hands. Man, little gentle, gentle monster, giant, bro. bro. That's I'm like, cool. Man, man. I would probably do that, and uh, that's pro- funny. I man. would do uh, probably like a Somalian. <laughs> you know what I mean. I am the captain. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> nah, I would probably be Somalian or Samoan Islands, like some uh, islanders of some sort. It would still be an island for sure, bro. Okay, okay. But then it's just like you got to respect those people that are like in, uh, I don't know. I've been watching too many clips of like uh, long distance runners, man. And yeah. Those are just so admirable, bro. Dog, that's funny. I'd probably be like from New Zealand. What? Oh, yeah. New Zealand, huh? Dude, them, them dudes is... They, they're like cousins of Samoans, right? Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. It's like this Those weird islands. line of, like, they have these traits that just that transcend from, you know. So when they say like the continents was all one piece, oh, I believe it. I bro. believe it, bro, because like the transfer of distinguishable cultures is like very apparent. In, yeah, like, you could tell because uh, the Pangea, bro. It was it was, <laughs> it was called the Pangea at one time when mm-hmm. all the all the continents were just one island, <laughs> and. uh the shift in the world or the shift in the earth that happened really set us apart and yeah. made those languages different, food different, climates different for these continents. And uh, not to go too deep in it, but 
you could see a lot of comparisons from what happened ge yeah. geographically from like terrain or from certain parts of the world mm -hmm. that branched out to like those islands yeah so it's interesting to see but i mean <laughs> as knowledgeable as i am i'm not really aware of like what parts of the philippines branched off i think yeah. it was china or some shit but yeah He's another east asian <clears throat> country yeah because like Thai, or, i don't know man i need to dig deeper into that i mean from mindanao i know the closest island to mindanao is uh indonesia okay so like you could see a lot of and the languages too yeah like mindanao like when you see a lot of the uh food too is are a lot more spice driven than when you go a little north yeah and, yeah yeah they're hitting those are the primal filipinos right there bro <laughs> Besides the mountain people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My coworker hit me with one that was like, hey, bro, you know the re Aboriginal Filipino were black? I was like, yeah, my brother. Come <laughs> on, man. Negros, yeah. right? Like, nah, the, oh. they're called Negritos. A bad. Or the, uh, Don't cancel. Yeah. Man, that was like a legitimate. No, I thought I was they, on some They shit. are called that, though. I Los mean, Negros? Like, yeah, Los Negros. But mm -hmm. nah, it's just uh, Negritos yeah. or like the I Aitas. Yeah. Know, like, yeah. Dude. Speaking of, well, not even, I just saw this. Um, my sports man over here, I low-key just started, like, following Final Four stuff. I'm not watching any March Madness shit. No? Bro. Nah. For real? I've been just watch, keeping up with the Rockets, bro. Okay. They got killed last night. U of H? The no Rockets. Oh, nah, nah. By Dallas, bro. Every time that I see a Rockets loss. But they won 11 in a row. I know. You got but they was them. dope. Yo, I'm not, I don't, I don't care. Dallas, whatever, whatever. Nah, bro. They got Kyrie and bro. Luka, they bro. were balling last night. Yeah. They look, he scored 47. Bro. Dude. It was a 20 point lead from like this half all the way through. Yeah. They look, they did not. They, look they good. weren't like letting up nothing, bro. Them threes was just dropping. Yeah. They were, and I was like, sheesh. They were very, uh, it was embarrassing. I mean, they had a lot of defenses for Jalen Green because he was becoming so hot. Yeah, they were like, look, we're going to write this whole plan to just trap his ass. Yeah, they did. Yeah, about just, a black just, widow. <laughs> just reading the freaking Reddit, I was like, bro, they literally trapped him all the way through. Yeah, they didn't let up on his ass, man. <clears throat> but U of H is out, unfortunately. They That, that hard loss to Duke. But then uh, I think it was Iowa or I forgot one of those things. They took Duke out yesterday. Really? Yeah, so Duke. Wow. Out. Yeah, I hope. Man, gout for one year or a seeding hairline? Did we talk about that? We talked about it in the uh, pre, <laughs> the pre episode ones, bro, the pro -lugs. Yo, gout for one year and you're done with it for the rest of your life. No, was it gout for once a year? Oh, I have gout. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, gout once a year. Yeah. Or receding hairline. Bro, I'm going receding hairline, bro. Well, well, actually, for once me, a year. Bro, for me, bro, I don't think I have an option, man. Once a year, I think would dang, gout pain. But how? Excuse me. How intense are we talking about? Are we talking about debilitate? Like you're laying in bed, like for it that whole day. Seemed like you tore your ligament type shit. Oh, bro, bro that's rough, man. I'd be, I'd be uh, super torn. Yeah. You either look good for 364 days out the year, and have your nah, hairline. You nah, it's not even one day though. Oh, you're talking about an episode no, yeah. for a week? Nah, bro. I actually, you know it's three, four days most of the time. Not that I know. Yeah. <laughs> not that I've ever had it, but um, yeah, man. I think that I would probably do. Uh, I'd go with the hairline. Yeah. That pain is excruciating. Shout out to all my homies that are watching this that know what's up. That stuff. That stuff does not play, man. God is is. Dang. Yeah, nah, I'm good. That'll put some thoughts in your head that are just like, yo, is it even worth trying to walk again? <laughs> you know? Damn, nah, bro. nah, nah, it is worth it. Yeah, bless. Oh, man. Dude, I'm thinking maybe like in chances of even like this year coming up, man, it's the year of the dragon. And like supposedly it's the most, one of the more fortunate years out of like all the years in the Chinese book. You know what Damn. I'm saying? Did you know that? I had supposedly no I heard it was bad luck too. You know what I mean? Like I heard it's the time to have a baby right now. Yeah. Year of the dragon. She. But it's not more. Not I don't know, man. It's just it's hard to see. Dog, who is your childhood basketball superstar that you wanted to be? My childhood basketball superstar that you wanted to be. Or I think you? it was 
Hakeem, bro. Oh, the dream, bro. I remember watching him in like the highlights and yeah. was just thinking no one can move like this guy. Yeah. And yeah. he was so well rounded and he was just making everyone look like they weren't even playing basketball. Yeah, anymore. bro. That dream shake, bro. Yeah. Or that or uh Jason Williams, bro, white okay. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the white the chocolate was nice, bro. With the Kings, yeah. that Kings team was crazy. Bro. And he can still hoop to this yeah, day. He still Yeah, man. The beast is still there, man. Yeah. The beast mentality is still there. I'm Dang. thinking, what about you, bro? Who's yours? Yo, I used to pretend that I was either, that's funny, man. I was either Hakeem or Barkley. Barkley? I played like Barkley, bro. I was yeah. pretty aggressive as a child in basketball for rebounding and trying to get it back up on the board. Um, Yeah, they were like, Rangel plays like Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever watch my brother play basketball? No, man. I heard, though, from some of my clients. Shout out to the homies that know him. You know, they're like, yeah, they used to hoop. My brother used to hoop, bro, but then, like, he got lost in the sauce a little bit, but yeah, his jumper is still there. For real? Mm -hmm. Hey, man, shout out to that boy, man, that, that jumper. Yeah, the jump. <laughs> hey, you never underestimate a man with a jump shot, bro. The time the yeah. time that they put in for that jump shot yeah. and the form, bro. To perfect it is yeah. all there. Because a lot of the times as Filipinos, man, we're playing the excuse game when it comes to basketball, bro. <laughs> Yo, man, I swear to, I swear, bro, on my life, man, if I was 6'2", I'd be in the league right now, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You know how many times I heard a Southeast Asian person say that shit, too? <laughs> yeah, if I was 6'3", man, I'd be in the league right now. I'd probably be making like $20 million a year, man. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. They yeah. got that Asian cat, Wu, what, what is they? The, he's, uh, oh, no, Ohio. Exactly, bro. In college. Nebraska. Huh? Nebraska? Yeah, the, the red jerseys? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Nebraska, but, man. It's one of those. He was like the Asian step, Japanese step. Curry. Yeah, he said he's in there though. He's Hopefully like he makes the league, bro. I know he's gonna make it in the summer league, but it's hard to yeah. tell, bro. It's not even about like being discriminated against or even like the the physicality There's of a the lot league that goes into it, bro. Yeah, it's not like um you might not even realize it, but these players are just like being crafted <laughs> like it's a fucking video game yeah, nowadays, yeah. bro. Like, it's almost like they have a template of, like, their style. So, like, to differentiate yourself yeah. from, like, the other people, like, so be it, man. Yeah. What do you think about those uh, those Get Ready With Me videos? Oh, I, I'm I'm actually kind of down the troll one, bro. Yeah. I like how you, I low-key want, I like the ones where, like, they'll set up the camera. And in, the, in the fridge? Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is our life. I am bred different. You know what I mean? Like they're they're like drinking a milkshake and they're like, act like legit like yeah. trolling that video, right? Yeah, those are like my favorite ones. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just the troll in me, but I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. that's just funny as hell. Because you yeah. see a lot of workout videos too, right? Man, don't get me started. I want to. I mean, personally, I do want to do a get ready get ready with me video. Yeah, even if it's like just before a job, yeah, before my job, or even like uh, <laughs> cooking. I want to do like. I was thinking about that. Like, I wanted to do like something on the YouTube channel about like just like us cooking or us yeah. like uh, cutting hair. Like, obviously, you, not me. No, him. So we're actually gonna do a segment where we switch um, careers, switch careers for a little bit, where he will uh, do a haircut. So if any of our viewers or listeners are down to be the uh, the guinea pig for John's cutting skills, um, we're looking for somebody, and I'm gonna make a dish. You know. On on set for us to try. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, is this pork supposed to be pink? I'm like, yeah, man, it's a uh, rare. Yeah, I'll, that shit al dente. I'm like, <laughs> that ain't even pasta, bro. You're like, that's E. coli. <laughs> yeah. So, E. coli sounds like a really delicious dish. <laughs> Damn, I got the side of E. coli on the yeah. side. Yeah, uh, a splash of aioli with a hint of E. coli. Salmonella, Salmonella coming to you hot. Yeah, man. I was thinking about, bro, I, like, I want to do something on YouTube or even mm -hmm. Instagram where we have, like, shorts and reels, like, yeah. showing our, showcasing our talent. Outside. Yeah, yeah. outside of, uh, outside of just these podcasts. I think we could do that, but let's just have to, maybe later on when we yeah. have, like, a we team do, supporting yeah. it. Yeah. We're also uh, talking about bringing on some guests. Yeah, we want to have a some third guests person shooter. Soon. Yeah. Know? Like, we'll just have them right in the middle. Yeah, right on here. our lap, just yeah. kind of, like, looking. No. Like two Santas, two Asian Santas, two <laughs> Filipino Santas, two brown Santas, dog. Yeah. That'd be funny. Though, like bro. two pundit sauce with a little cheese in the middle. Nah, no cheese, bro. <laughs> Again, no cheese for the homie, please. No queso. Yo, I'm gonna make you a shirt that just says no cheese, please. Yeah, no cheese. See, Unless it's that goo up. Wait, you know bro, saying? you don't know how many times I said no cheese in Spanish and in Mexico City, bro. Dang. Sin queso, por favor. 
It's not oh sin queso is no yeah, queso. Sin queso. I thought it was no queso. Nah, what? bro. That's not nah, it's sin queso. <laughs> that's English. Is yeah, that's that's a that's that oh. Spanglish, bro. <laughs> Damn, you didn't even know. Man, I would be like, no queso, no queso, bro. <laughs> yeah. Why would, my voice change? <laughs> yeah, why yo, you notice that when you speak Spanish, your voice gets pitched up a little higher. Yeah, bro. Uh my wife called me out on that. She's like, Why are you talking in a higher <laughs> tone when you speak in Spanish? He's like, You're a baritone. Yeah. Why are you up here with the alto? Yo, with the tenors and shit. Bro. Or tenors, my bad. And I was like, yo, uh, uh <laughs> I know no, no can't. I'd be like, every time I uh enter a Uber, Buenas tardes. <laughs> Yo, buenos dias. She's like looking at the Uber guys like, the hell? <laughs> yeah. And then when I started talking in the uh, Uber, they're like, what the hell? The transition. <laughs> they be like, uh, or they, you know, I always say like, buenos dias, <laughs> buenos tardes, or buenos noches. And then I'd be like, uh, para John? <laughs> oh, for John? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they'd be like, what the hell is going on? Right <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about one segment that we can keep on. Like we have like a period mm -hmm. of uh, a rolling like segment, a rolling yeah. segments like we yeah. can keep on for the episode. I think one segment that we should act just from the top of my head was just like uh, the meal of the week, Dang. right? What was your meal of the week that really hit the spot for you, bro? You go first. Let me think about it because I did actually eat this weekend for the first time in a month. Damn meal of the week for me, bro. Yeah, I think it was probably. Some food in Mexico City. Yeah, yeah. Out of, uh, out of, like, particularly, it had to be this uh, fideo dish with poached lobster, bro. And yeah. I'm not big on cr crustaceans uh -huh. or, like, Are lobster. I, I mean, I really enjoy it, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to be like, oh, yeah, I got to get yeah, the lobster. Yeah. I got to get the crawfish. I'm mm -hmm. not a fiend for crustaceans, bro. I'd rather have a really good pan-seared fish with skin okay. on. Yeah, and I did have a really good pan fish, wood fired. It was wood fired fish. Oh my god, dude! They Dang. cooked it perfectly, bro. That sounds good. Yeah, like perfectly seared skin, flesh and tender, Ooh. flaky fish. <laughs> this is when the video gets like yeah. steamy and it's like wavy. I'm talking about Long John Silver's, <laughs> no, Captain D's. Captain Remember D's? that? Shit? Yeah, Captain D's was crazy. They had that salt, that vinegar sauce mm -hmm. that you would put on the fish and chips. Yeah, and the hush puppy. Dude, the hush puppy was almost Man. like crazy good it was so good for Dang. what it was dude and then the fried batter mm -hmm. would be in the bottom yeah, of the then, plate then, <laughs> i'm like dipping that on sauce bro <laughs> captain these i haven't heard that in so long yeah bro. west airport yeah. For a long time ago dog but, um what about you bro dude what did i have i had dim sum i hate that i have had dim sum twice on this this podcast nah bro but dim sum hits man yeah. you know this dim sum is a sign of prosperity in our culture bro man if you can eat dim sum with the people that you value in your life, yeah, bro, you're yeah. winning in life, man. Um, I will say that not so much a food, but what I did have, I, I partook, or you know, I got to partake in um, sugar cane with kumquat, kumquat. from Linda's. Yup. Linda's, yeah, dude. If you guys haven't had sugar cane, which maybe you guys have, man, um, if you're in the Houston area, I know you can get it at a number of places, but... Uh, Linda's off of Bel Air next to Golden Dim Sum and on the other side of Crown and that second plaza. It's like all, Miyagi. yeah, it's all exotic, you know, fruits and stuff that they sell. Like that stuff was up to like $25 for these packs yeah, of different fruits. And I had never seen some of these fruits before. And um, the way that drink hits is really refreshing. It has the, the kumquat hint, but then the coconut water and the sugar mm. cane, it's like, Yo, this was bomb, but just don't leave it in your car and then think that it's okay to take That's a sip fermented, from it. That's fermented, bro. It's about to turn vinegar. Yeah, I had that this morning. I took a sip real fast, and I said, oh, that's not the same drink that yeah. I had yesterday, man. Yeah, bro. Oh, man. So, yeah. Hey, yo. Summer is coming in hot. Yes. Sugar cane drinks are going to be necessary. Yeah. But if you are watching your sugar, make sure to drink your water, guys. Dang, it's hella. I think it's it's going to be it's hella necessary, bro, for the summer. Maybe that's my mind. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right, yeah. Man. Shout out to our sponsor, Awala. Thank Awala. you so thank much. Thank you much for these uh, bottles. Yep. He said that they were 100% lead free. It should be. It should be. Mm. But yeah, we shout out to you guys. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Shout out to y'all. Episode three. We are coming to an end. That's right. And uh, we just want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in. Episode yeah. four. We're coming for you. Yeah, we're trying to get to at least five. They say if you do seven episodes, then. <laughs> They say the podcast is here to stay, and we are going to be there. 
I'm excited yeah. to see what yeah. happens, guys. Thank you so much. Peace. Later. Love y'all. <laughs> like what? Damn, love y'all. <laughs>